Hey guys, Eric here. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. Before we tune in to the details today, I have one little favor I'd like to ask you. Are you listening to this on Apple Podcasts or Spotify? If you are, and if you haven't done it already, it would be so helpful to Anita and I if you could leave a five-star review. It could just be putting five stars or even writing down something that you really enjoyed and learned from the episodes that you've heard so far. This kind of help would really improve our ability to give you better content and also to help other people find out about Taiwanica. So if you wouldn't mind taking just a few moments to do that, if you haven't already, we would greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much. And we really hope you enjoy today's episode. Or Mahjong. There's these Taiwanese girls like watching them. And then (laughs) in the corner, you see this guy just like yelling at everybody (laughs) and say, you know, Kine Kine. And it's just like saying all these crazy things in Taiwanese. Like, this is episode 38, talking about Taiwan. Top five go-to places. Weigoren version. What's up, everybody? My name is Eric. I am one of your hosts here on Taiwanica Podcast. And joining me today is the lovely Taiwanese Anita. Hello, everybody. I am Anita, another host on Taiwanica. In today's episode, Eric is going to be our Weigoren. Hey. Because he's Weigoren. To share his point of view of the top five places to go to in Taiwan. And I will be the judge. Yes. That's what needs. Exactly. Here so we go. She is going to tell us all about whether our Weigoren friends <laughs> got it down for where to go in Taiwan. And if it isn't, she's going to be very judgy and, you know, <laughs> give us a rating about how our prediction of the cool places are in Taiwan are ought to be. All right, so without further ado, let's dive in to number five. Number five. So number five for most Weigoren foreigners in Taiwan is Jiufen. So everyone, I don't know if you know the movie Spirited Away. It's a wonderful movie about like dragons and spirits and all mm-hmm. these sort of things. And uh, well, basically it was based on this location in Taiwan, even though it's a Japanese movie, it had this cool Taiwanese place, Hot Springs. Even though Jofen, I don't think, actually has hot springs. <laughs> no. But so basically, you know, us foreigners, us Weigoren, really want to go there because of that movie. And, you know, there's some really cool things there. We think, like, oh, all Taiwanese people must love this place. It's got, like, local food, <laughs> and it's got lots of souvenirs, and lots of narrow streets that are wet, and I don't know, every time I, I went to Joe Fun, it was rainy. That's, uh, that's true. It's, it's like a rainy place, right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, and so you think you're going to be able to, like, check out the real authentic mm-hmm. Taiwanese, like, culture there. Yeah. And so when I, when I went there, I felt like, yeah, yeah, this is totally it. This is totally Taiwanese. Taiwan in a nutshell <laughs> right here you know I'm, I'm like having like tofu pudding oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. and some like sausages and stuff like that I was like this is totally Taiwan so what do you think Anita is this a really authentic Taiwanese location I gotta say you got it right this one is pretty spot on like, oh, nice. e- even Taiwanese people likes to go there during the weekend starting off with a good spot all right yeah good job good job and that you are right it's always raining there I don't know what happened to Joe Fen, by the way. Why Goren made a mistake <laughs> on the pronunciation. Uh-oh. <laughs> so it's always rainy, you know, give it this little town, a little bit like poetic kind of feelings. Mm. I think that's why people like to go there. And the building, you're right, the building from Spirited Away is really beautiful. And yeah. this is the place even Taiwanese people would like to go to. I would like to go there if, you know, I, I was in Taiwan. So if a Taiwanese person goes there, what is like the the goal? Is it to eat a particular thing or see a specific thing? What's like the Taiwanese mindset about going to Joe? Definitely enjoy the view, just going to a small alley, taking photos. And another thing is food, of course. Ah. And there was a famous food there. <laughs> I was thinking about the Chinese name in my oh, head. That's okay. <laughs> it's called Yuan. Yuan. It's basically like a bubble tea, bubble, the tapioca, but it's made from like either taro, sweet potato, 
Yeah, it's like famous there in Jofun. Wow, so that's like the delicacy of Jofun. Exactly. Nice.、Mm-hmm. I don't think I've ever had that. So as a foreigner, that's definitely not in like the know. So if you're a foreigner listening to this, definitely try this food that I need to mention. What was the name again? Yuan. Yuan. It's very obvious. You will see usually outside of the, those places, there will be like long line, and when you go see, it's like colorful. Bowl kind of thing in the soup version. Oh, no, that's the things you're looking for. So you're looking for a bowl full of colorful balls. Yeah, <laughs> got it.、Exactly. All right, if you can find that, you should try it. Yeah, and another place. I think most of people, most of foreigners, when they go to Jofun, they would just be in the small town alley area. As a Taiwanese, I would recommend it. You just go a little bit further. It's called the Gold Museum because they are like a. Beautiful history about this place. It used to be like a mine there. People go、mm. there mining for gold. So usually they have like a civilization there. Now it's not so popular because nobody is doing the mining now. But they have like beautiful history with like traditional Taiwanese people and Japanese people because they happened during the colonized era. So it's really beautiful places you can go to. Wow! So not only did we find out some more local details about Jo Fun, but you also gave us a little、uh, secret about、mm-hmm. what's. Nearby. Thank you so much for that、uh, suggestion. So, You're if, welcome. if you want to check out where、uh, gold was mined in Taiwan, definitely look it up. It's right next to Joe Fun. And just one final tip: there's a teapot mountain that's nearby. Oh, yeah,、uh, you know about that. I'm a little local. Oh, you're not. And so, if you're a hiker, there's a really nice, beautiful spot. Keep in mind, it's going to be rainy, but there's a wonderful scenery of a teapot mountain、yeah. or teapot peak. I think it's what it's called, and you can check it out. Mm-hmm. It's supposed to be spectacular. It is. It is. Wow. Good job.、All、good、right. job, Eric. Thanks. So let's dive into number four. Number four. All right. So number four for most foreigners is Tai Lu Ge. Yeah. So like yeah. the the eastern part of Taiwan. Yeah. You know where all the mountains and the ocean. Where every Taiwanese says, "There's mountain. There's sea." There's Tai Lu Ge. <laughs> okay, so if you say that to any Taiwanese person, they will get it. They、mm-hmm. will get it. And so that's a place where every person wants to go if you really love nature. Okay,、mm-hmm. if you're a nature lover, if you like walking in the mountains and maybe seeing some monkey, Tai Lu Ge is your place to go. We actually went there one time. Yeah. Yeah. It was a wonderful experience. Yeah. We actually. Walked there. Just as a side <laughs> note, you can definitely take a bus. We don't、um, recommend that、yeah. you walk it. It's very you, dangerous. It's also illegal. I think so. <laughs> don't recommend it. We went through a tunnel that we weren't supposed to go through,、wow. uh, and we saw buses driving by, and they like <laughs> almost hit us. But、uh, it was a fun time. It was a very fun time. <laughs> It was for our honeymoon of all times too. Wow!、Uh, yeah. So、uh, it's definitely a great place. But more details. Diving in, Anita.、Mm-hmm. As a local, is Tai Lu Ge a place to visit? Oh my god! I'm gonna say yes. But but you know, this place is very special for Taiwanese people. Most of Taiwanese people know about this place, but not many people really do what we did. Just you know, walk around those tunnels,、mm. see the views. Most、yeah. people just driving by. There is a road. If you are going travel on the east side of Taiwan. That's just one road you have just to drive through. Either you are going traveling from Taichung, Huaian, those kind of area. That's the only path you need to go through. I so、see. when I was、uh, growing up, I always know about Tailuge, but always just driving by in the car.、Oh. And whenever like foreigners says Tailuge, I was like, yeah, this is definitely the place for only for foreigners to visit. Yeah, until this white Gordon. Hi. <laughs> I was like, yeah, and we we're like, yeah, I've never been to Taiwan. I was like, let's do it. Let's do like a hiker, you know, explorer style. And I was like, oh my god, this place is spectacular.、Mm-hmm. It is really beautiful. Everything. I don't know how to even describe it. The mountain, the cliff, the water, just the rock. You know, just so beautiful. It、it's、really is.、Great. The walk itself isn't very safe, but、yeah. the view is breathtaking. There's so many little parts of it that you just wouldn't have seen if you drove. Yeah, you know, that's so, true. So if you if you want to take a, your trip to Tai Lu Ge on the next level, you can definitely hike for part of it. The best part, I mean, the best way to travel to Tai Lu Ge, I will suggest taking a bus. They have like a bus line. They, they will go there, but they don't stop every stop. And two, it doesn't follow the schedule. So I think the best part of you traveling to this area is to like book a tour. 
there will be someone having like a minivan. You know, you can join the group, and they will take you around the minivan. You can tell them to stop in a certain place, and you can go get off the car and walk around. The reason I don't recommend you drive is because there was no place for you to park your car. True. Very dangerous. So if you're a white girl and you're not familiar with the routes, booking the like mini tour will be the best option for you. Absolutely, and you know it's actually kind of funny because originally we did rent a car and then we <laughs> weren't able to use it in the end. And but it actually turned out to be a benefit for us because of the things that we just mentioned to you. So definitely give our suggestions a try, and you will not regret it. Yeah. Okay. So. We're gonna dive into number three. Number three. All right. So number three is definitely like the one that everyone knows about, and they most Waikoran have definitely been there. And they haven't been there, then I don't know what they're doing in Taiwan. <laughs> That's but harsh. I'm just saying, it's just you know, it's a, it's the must to like if you want to say I've been to Taiwan, you have to go to this place. Which is Taipei One Hundred One. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> This is definitely a white spot. <laughs> Come on, it's the tallest building in Taiwan. Not only is the tallest, it's gorgeous. It's just absolutely stunning when you see it. And when you see it in like a picture, it doesn't do it justice. When no. you actually go and see the thing, you're like, oh, oh. <laughs> nothing around Taipei One Hundred One wow, is anywhere near as tall. <laughs> and it's just like, hey, <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> And I'm green. It's <laughs> have, blue, actually, like greenish blue. Blue, yeah. They have a very special word for that in that Chinese <laughs>、yeah. uh, BD. It's definitely the Taiwan color. Oh yeah. Oh,、uh, that you mentioned it. Yeah, and so、uh, it's it has all of like Taiwanese culture like built on it. They got turtles. You know, they got gold stuff, and you don't know anything about this, do you? But that's okay. <laughs> Why go? I got it. Okay, girlfriend, I'll take care of this. Okay, so you got it. You got it. So, anyways, one of the coolest things is that they have one of the fastest elevators in the world. It's so fast. I think it goes in, like we went in, and it took like maybe a minute to get from there to there. Your head is popping, <laughs> like by the time you get to the top. But when you get up there, wow, it's just so amazing. I'm not saying that just because I'm like respecting Taiwan right now. It really is amazing. So if you want to give it a try, this white girl and this foreigner is giving you a big thumbs up. So <laughs> as as a Taiwanese, what do you think about Taipei One Hundred One? Have you noticed I've been so quiet the whole time? Yeah. Oh、don't. well. Okay. The Taipei One Hundred One. It's a landmark. Everyone knows it. And you know, sometimes when some place is just too popular, and as a local, we just like. Meh. We know the place, and as for foreigners to go to, so this was definitely the foreigner spots. But to be honest, I I've been there once. It was really good. We'll be right back. I really like journaling, but I always end up in no time or cannot find a journal that I really like. So I was like, "Hey, let me create one." So here it is: a self help journal created and designed by Anita. Inside the book. I provide very simple and easy to follow template. For example, in the morning to do list, in the evening gratitude practice. So you can use a very little time to start this healthy habit. Go ahead and check it out in our description down below, or go to our buymeacoffee dot com. To be honest, actually, Anita and I were tour guides for a few friends of mine, Japanese people who came to visit me, and they came to Taiwan just to hang out with Anita and Eric. And Anita thought it was a good idea to take them to Taipei One Hundred One. And were they satisfied? They were super happy. You know, as a local, sometimes we will prepare the different travel package for different people. We'll just hang out with our friend. We wouldn't go to Taipei One Hundred One. Of course. But if it's every time it's foreign, we wanted to impress them,、hmm. so we just take them to like the bam 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 the kind of locations. So Taipei One Hundred One is definitely the place. Absolutely. Yeah. And if you ever want to see something cool about Taipei One Hundred One, check Google Taipei One Hundred One New Year Fireworks.、Oh. You can definitely check that out on YouTube. We'll leave a link down in the description below. Basically, think of Taipei One Hundred One fireworks for New Year's, just like Times Square, in New York. Or Sydney for Australia. Absolutely, that's exactly、yeah. like that.、Yeah. So now we're gonna jump into 
Number two. Number two. Yeah. So number two is <laughs> a place for all you foodies out there. <laughs> If you really want to dive into delicacies, then this is the place for you. And that is Tainan. So most of the people when they come to Taiwan, you know, they're they're looking for food. In Taipei, they're gonna find food. They're gonna find food that's gonna be delicious. But if you are a type of person who really likes to maybe check out some blogs or maybe trip books before you visit a place, no matter what, if you look up something in Taiwan, Tainan is going to be a place that sticks out. And it's, you know, they got some really cool architecture and like history. Like one of the places is called Chikan Lo. And Chikan Lo is a really cool building. Definitely check it out. But the main reason why you go there isn't for that stuff. It's because the food is just so good. <laughs> and I'm being ridiculous about it for a reason because, well, I lived there with Anita and we lived there for about two years. During that time, we got, we gained a couple pounds. Let's just say <laughs> that because the food was just so phenomenal. Uh, it was pretty good. It was so good. If I wanted to try to go anywhere again and take any friends to really get a, a bite of a Taiwanese spice or Taiwanese mm -hmm. flavor, it would be in Tainan. Wow. So Anita, how is my Waigoren <laughs> sense on this place <laughs> first thing first i'm i was surprised about your pronunciation of chicken low it's really really accurate good oh, job you. and about this place yes eric mentioned about like you know everywhere you go in taiwan you can get really good food because that's what we are famous for we are proud of is which is a really great food but any other places in taiwan is more you know international sometimes you got like a fusion like taiwanese and japanese fusions or things like that but taiwan tainan specifically you can find some super authentic food in this city sometimes it's even very special for taiwanese people you know like what we mentioned about last time the the food combination you know we mentioned about the tomato and the soy sauce if you want to check out more go back to the, that episode that's right one of my favorites in tainan is definitely the beef soup Ooh. Yes, get out of here i mean if you look <laughs> it up in any travel blog that's the first food yes. that comes up i think any foreigner or any taiwanese person if you go to tainan you gotta try the beef soup for all you people who don't eat meat out there i got another suggestion and that is definitely the tofu pudding is just out of this world in Tainan. <laughs> oh my gosh. And they have so many different flavors. And just so, you know, I'm going to be a little bit local. Like not Taiwan local, but Tainan local. Oh, right wow. now because I lived there for two years. I got a little secret for you. If you look up a place called Wu Fei Jie, mm -hmm. uh, this very small old street, they got lots of tofu pudding there. Very traditional, very delicious. I'll leave a link in the description down below. You're gonna love it. <laughs> Good job, honey. All right. Yeah, definitely check it out. And also Wu Fei Jie that you mentioned, it's also famous for its breakfast. Another phenomenal food in Taiwan. That's Must true. Must try. Oh yeah breakfast get up early because all the tainan people do don't stay up late because they don't either <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, exactly yes. they close pretty early during the nighttime but open super early in the, in the morning you got it all right so now without further ado we're gonna jump into number one wow number one so number one it shouldn't be a surprise but we're gonna talk about it anyways and that is that in taiwan as a foreigner the must go to place is definitely if you go anywhere is a night market <laughs> No matter what city you're in, no matter where you are in Taiwan, even if you're in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> you're going to find a night market. <laughs> and that's where people go, especially foreigners. And so going to a night market for a foreigner, the purpose of it is a little bit different from a Taiwanese person, I think. Okay? This is just my opinion. When I go to a night market, I'm going because I'm hungry, okay? I'm going because I know the food there is fabulous. I want to eat all the food there. Or I want to go on a date. So I want to go on a date with uh, some cute Taiwanese girl. He <laughs> never took me. He never took me to the night market. I took her there all the time. No, that's not true. Uh, it totally happened. Okay, <laughs> don't listen to her. She's crazy. <laughs> so, and so when we went there, I was just, those would be the two purposes and only those. But there's so much more to a night market 
that a foreigner just doesn't realize. You know, <laughs> there's like shopping. You can buy stickers. You can、oh, buy yeah. Yeah, yeah,、yes. posters. You can even buy clothes. Yeah, and that's not all. There's even gambling. Yes, going on in the back. <laughs> For knockoffs, of, only local, of, local knows the way. <laughs> yes, is, if you walk deeper and deeper into the night market, you're like, where am I going? And all of a sudden, you see all these people sitting down, like playing these ball games or mahjong.、Yeah. There's these Taiwanese girls like watching them, and then in the corner, you see this guy just like yelling at everybody <laughs> and saying, you know, kine kine, and it's just like it's just saying all these crazy things in Taiwanese. They're like saying, "You want to buy this? You want to buy this? Bet this, that, this." And、yeah. I'm just like, "What is happening?" So I heard this is more of a thing that happens in the South these days. In the North, maybe it's not so common anymore. But you know, I'm just a foreigner. Anita, what is <laughs> your opinion on night markets? It's really interesting here to hear the foreigner describing our traditional stuff. But basically, you gotta like. Ninety nine percent, right? Yes.、Uh, in the north, just like every any kind of big city, they try to make the evolution for night market.、It、used to be very traditional, but right now they try to make it classy because we wanted to try our best to present the best for foreigners. So the more you know, big cities that you can go, for example, Taipei, Taichung, those places, we know those are the big city the foreigners will go. So we try to make. The night market more international, but you're right. The, the more south that you go, you can find like some like really local night market. Just like you say, nowhere you know you're in the middle of nowhere, but there is a night market just behind the temple. Right, right exactly. <laughs> Or in a little really cold street of Taichung.、Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yes. So, yes, you're right. So the more local night market you go, you can see a lot of many different things. Not just the food is more authentic, more like you know original form. Doesn't have any other country's fusion or influence on it. And also, yeah, like you said, you can buy clothes, you can do the gambling, you can play games, you can win the you know stuffed animals, you can even win like drinks. You know, sometimes you can win a bottle of wine. I wouldn't recommend you drink it, but it's just cool <laughs> that you know you want something. I, that's the original form of night market. It's not. Food. It's actually those kind of like small games. It's like entertainment, right? And then when you start to play those games, you'll get hungry. So that's why more people, like food vendors and food trucks, join night markets. So that's why the original form, most traditional night markets look like. And what I remember when I was a kid, I don't think it's like common right now. When I was a kid, every time we go to night market, there would be like a They will prepare like a small fish tank, and、yes. they will always have like a goldfish, and the you they will give you like something like a net, but the net is made from paper. Oh, yeah. When I was a kid, it was like made from paper, so it's very hard for you to get the goldfish into whatever container. Basically, the concept is if you can catch the goldfish, you can bring it back home. Wow, like that. When I was a kid, I think if you pay like ten Taiwanese dollar, you can get like three nets, three、Ooh. to five nets, and you can use those get whatever how many goldfish that you can you can get, and then、wow. you can bring it back home. So it's like a trend. When I was a kid, like people are practicing at home,、oh. trying to get as get as much as.、Uh, As possible. That's very interesting. That kind of reminds me of all of like the crane games in Taiwan now. That's very popular, like grabbing the stuffed animals in the machines.、Yeah. You know, it's very local. What you just talked about, I never knew、yeah. that before. That's so cool. That's like the thing. When I was a kid, every time we went to a night market, we just like very simple. Either that goldfish game, or you will see bunch of thing in front of you, and they will give you rings. You know, like again, like if you pay like ten or fifty dollars, so you use the ring to get you know whatever you can put the ring on it,、yeah. and you can bring it back home.、Ah. The same thing, same concept. Yeah, those two are the most popular games when I was a kid, and of course right now they have like a lot of like what you say mahjong or like shooting games or many different types of games right now. You can basically win something. Just one special note I wanted to add to this. I've I've heard that this style of night market is slowly disappearing. That's true.、Um, and just the shopping and the food is becoming more and more apparent in Taiwan. Yeah. Because gambling is illegal technically in Taiwan, right? Technically, and also animal protecting. Oh, animal, animal rights. Animal rights. So, you know, like those kind of thing, people are not really doing it. Yeah. 
Yeah. It makes sense. But, you know, some people I've heard of you are a little sad that this is disappearing. But it makes sense. You know, you have to go with the changes of life. That, that's true. Well, anyways, that's our top five must-go-to places Weigoren version in Taiwan. What did you think? Did you think our top five were really accurate? Definitely let us know in the description down below. We will also be posting a blog post about this later on our blog called, you know, blogger slash Taiwanica. And definitely give it a try. And we hope you enjoy. Yeah, thank you so much for your time today. Give your heads up. We're doing the series right now, right? So this there will be four different parts. This will be the first part. And we will share more But you know, Taiwanese point of view and American point of view. It's going to be fun. That's right. We'll see you again in the next episode. To be continued. See you next day. Thanks so much for tuning in to Taiwanica. If you're enjoying the show, please feel free to rate, subscribe, and leave a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. That helps others find the show, and we greatly appreciate it. Thanks again for listening, and we'll catch you in the next episode.